And that was Korean Hawthorne with Won't He Do It? Said he would. Uh-huh. Won't he do it? <laughs> Won't he do it? Won't I think I'm messing, <laughs> I'm messing up her song. <laughs> uh, this is the Artist Stage Radio Show with Tracy Williamson, and I have Deborah Rose here with me. I'm so excited because we're talking about radio promotions and its relevance. Do we need it? Do we need it? So, Deborah, let's jump right into that. You're a radio promoter. You've been in radio for years. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts about radio, um, music airing on radio right now with new artists, artists that are here? Do we need radio promotions? Well, yes, I think we do need radio promotions. Okay. Um, we need radio promotions like we need any other type of promotion. Gotcha. Um, you want to get your product out there. You want to use as many avenues as you possibly can mm-hmm. to get your um, your product out there because, let's face it, it it's still a business right. at the end of the day. And so you are, you, the bottom line is you're while you're um, soul winning, mm-hmm. you're still trying to feed your family. That's true. On this particular medium. Right, that's true. So you want to go to radio, you want to uh, go to magazines, you want to do whatever you can do to promote your product. So definitely um, don't sleep on radio. Please don't. (laughs) Don't sleep on radio. And and the great thing um, with radio today is because of... um, With with the onslaught of having so many other options... Mm -hmm. People in radio are now being much more creative. That's true. With your product and with you as an artist. So we're trying to come up with different ways to make you stand out, to make your product stand out Mm -hmm. so that we can reach even more people. So that's a good thing for the artist as well. Right. So because we have streaming sites, like I talked about SoundCloud Mm -hmm. earlier, we have so many listeners and consumers Mm -hmm. who will go to uh, Spotify, Pandora, Mm -hmm. and create their own playlists. Right. So with a radio station and um, if we're trying to promote new music and current music, Mm -hmm. what are some things that that you would say uh, radio has done to, I don't like to use the word compete, but (laughs) I guess that's the way to say it. Well, I mean, we're streaming also. Okay. So through our website, Mm -hmm. you can stream. We have um, apps. Uh, Rejoice has our own uh, free downloadable app, Rejoice 102, Mm -hmm. W-Y-C-A, downloaded at your leisure. Um, You know, we have our Facebook Live Mm -hmm. uh, page, so our on-air personalities are going live just like everybody else is going live Right um, on Instagram, Twitter. So we're everywhere that the other mediums are as well. Mm -hmm. It's just that we have the added benefit Mm -hmm. of also being a radio station. Right. So you can come in live and talk to us and interact with us and and all of those great things. So we we have that one added advantage. If you all heard that, that's the one added advantage. You're able to actually speak with her and mm-hmm. speak with the announcers um, with Spotify and different things like that it's all just internet exactly. and it's it's online um, mm-hmm. and I don't know if they may change that up at some point but we still have people that you can touch you can speak with um, mm-hmm. things that are more tangible than maybe just streaming sites exactly. now with you being a program director and like oh, when a person has a Spotify playlist, they make their own playlist, mm-hmm. like on my Spotify account, whatever I want to listen to. Mm-hmm. But you being the program director, you actually put together the playlist yes. of music <laughs> for all of you artists out there that have submitted music and you want your music to be played. She would be she is the person who puts that together. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm, I'm not going to ask you, Deborah, just to tell us how you do that, because mm-hmm. we want to give away all all the good secrets. Mm-hmm. But. Is there a reason why some music is played and some is not? Well, mm, other than all things being equal. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Some music, well, you know, it it depends on the format of the radio station. Okay. Uh, What they are leaning more towards. Um, Are they heavy on tradition? Mm -hmm. Are they heavy on contemporary? You know, this week are we trying to push upbeat music are Mm -hmm. we trying to push you know slower songs worship Mm -hmm. what are we what is the radio station focusing on okay and so if your particular um song fits into that into those categories then you will start to see a little more play on your song okay okay Um, uh, not to mention that, you know, of course we're going to go with um, the more mainstream artists. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll play those a little heavier because that's what people have shown that they like. Okay. Um, and if you are a newer artist, we may put you in um, 
a lighter rotation mm -hmm. just to get the audience familiar with you to see what type of feedback we're going to get from the audience. Mm -hmm. Do they like what it is that you're putting out there? And if we get that response, then we will begin to gradually increase that rotation. So so just like artists testing the market, you all test the market Definitely. as well. Exactly. To see, you know, what, to keep your listenership to um, keep strong. It because sometimes, um, you know, if I'm playing, just say, for example, a Kirk Franklin song, mm -hmm. and then I come behind that with an independent artist, mm -hmm. but the quality of your production is not there, I can't have my Kirk Franklin song at a 10 and then I come right behind them with a 3. That's true. That is now going to affect my audience. Mm -hmm. One, they're going to ask, what in the world is that? Right, that's true. <laughs> you know? And so, um, and then I don't want to do that to an artist. Mm -hmm. you know, I want that artist to be pushed in the best possible light. Right. And if I'm, you coming behind somebody like that and you're not at that caliber, mm -hmm. then that's a, not a good look for you. And, and what she's saying, you just made a point about it affects your audience. Mm -hmm. um, this also speaks to you, the artist, when you are singing and promoting your music and regarding in regards to your audience. When you create one song, you go from another song to the next, and it can, sometimes it can be up and down. It does sometimes confuse the audience. Yes. Um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't create and be... Um, flexible at times but just like how you promote your music as the artist the radio station they test the market and you view it the same way exactly. of keeping listeners connected to what you've built and to your brand exactly now you talked about different artists being at different levels um, and you said new artists when they first come in now some new artists may be signed to a label and some aren't. Mm -hmm. Now, I I think I want to jump into this before we go to the, some more new some more music for the artists that are not signed to a label and they are independent and indie artists. If you're an indie artist, pay attention, share this with other people who you know are interested uh, being connected to the music industry, have music on radio, want music on radio. Mm -hmm. If you're an indie artist that you may not have a radio promoter, and we'll touch on that later, what? I don't say what's the formula, but what is the correct way to approach the radio station and program director being yourself mm -hmm. in regards to submitting new music? music? Okay, well, the first thing is please have your packaging correct. Make it as professional as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. I understand that you may be an independent artist, but you are still someone out here promoting yourself, and you always want to put your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. So when you, if you are sending me a physical uh, copy of your uh, music, it should be properly labeled. Okay. Because that's the first that's your calling card. Mm -hmm. So if I look at that and I see that it is done in a professional manner, now I'm going to take you a, a little more seriously. Mm -hmm. If you are contacting me, find out you know when my music days are. And when That's I good. say my music days, I mean what days am I talking to uh, promoters or artists even? It, and, and for me, that may that's a Wednesday, mm -hmm. and I'm doing it from you know just say from 10 to 12 noon, 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 12 noon. Find out what that day is. And once I tell you what that day is, if it's not that day, mm -hmm. please be courteous enough to tell me, okay, I'll call you back on that day, mm -hmm. but here is my music. Email that to me or whatever. Mm -hmm. But don't try to get me to review your music, um, and it's not my music day. It's not the music. Those music days are critical. They are very critical <laughs> because, you know, I, I'm, I'm wearing many hats mm -hmm. at the radio station. Right. Um, so I'm the program director I'm on air I'm doing community affairs mm -hmm. doing the day-to-day -day operations so uh, be respectful of um, the program director or the music director's time okay definitely now, do now that you mentioned the emailing part mm -hmm. so how should they what type of files how should that happen well, well people, what should they say? What's, what's user-friendly for people you? People are still sending MP3s, okay. and that's fine. Um, they're sending different types of WAV uh, files. It, mm -hmm. it, for me, it doesn't matter, just okay. as long as I can pull that up. And if I have an issue with mm -hmm. it, I'll, 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 we'll reach out to you and let you know I okay. can't get this. But, you know, I, I'm not Particular much of a about. stickler on that. Okay. All right. So emailing, sticking to the music days, because... Mm -hmm. 
she has so many things to do, just like other program directors. She's not the only program director out here, but right. she's speaking. Is this what she's saying is true for just about m many of them? Right. Um, and they then have the, music the last piece to that is if you are an independent artist and you happen to get through to the program director and you get that feedback, accept what that feedback is and hmm. don't try to force the program director to see things your way. Right. Understand what he or she is saying to you and take it from there and do what you need to do to conform to what it is that they're looking for. Right. Or, you know, go someplace else. Go but someplace, <laughs> someplace else. <laughs> but it, it's not the program director's job to conform to what you want. Right. You're trying to get on their um, their vehicle. And so you need to listen to that. And that's true. I mean, if this is where if this is where you want to be and you want your music played on this platform, this medium, then music days, listening to what they're saying, especially if you're talking about program. She's been doing this a long time, you all. So and mm -hmm. not just her, but so many of them who work in radio. Um, it doesn't mean that everything they say is is golden right. <laughs> or Bible, but right. it's, it's just what it's, works for me. Exactly. And so you just have to figure that out as you're going, um, as, as you're growing as an artist and as you're yes. going around from different station to different station. But some, most of the rules are basic and they, they're the, the same across the board. Right. So finding out that music date, being respectful, submitting professional uh, products and then listening to what they have to say, uh, accepting um, constructive criticism right. sometimes. Right. And you're going to receive a lot of that along your music journey. Um, mm -hmm. Radio promoters, uh, tour promoters, publicists, so many people, but mm -hmm. just listen to what they're saying. Like she said, take it, either conform to it or, you know, maybe figure out another route you want to take. Exactly. Um, so we're talking about radio promotions. Is it relevant? Uh, do we need it? Proper protocol. We just uh, discussed being an independent artist and how you should reach out to a program director such as Deborah Rose, who is a program director for Rejoice 102.3 FM, WRCA Radio. Mm -hmm. But when we come back, we're going to talk more about the proper protocol and if you're signed to a label. And also we're going to talk about when you have a program, not program director, a radio promoter who works on your behalf, who has to speak with mm -hmm. Deborah. <laughs> Yes. The program director. So right now we're going to go to more music, and it's Jonathan McReynolds with Not Lucky, I'm Loved. Maybe I succeeded a little. I jumped up from the floor to the middle. You think I want the credit, I don't. Because the glory.
And that was Jonathan McReynolds, not yeah. Lucky. I'm love and his new project. Friend. Yeah, you know we're gonna have Jonathan on the show, hopefully real soon. Mm. Uh, but from his project, Make Room. If you don't have it, go get it. Also, be sure to get uh, Brian Mc, Brian McKnight, Brian <laughs> Courtney Wilson. <laughs> he wants you to get his album too. <laughs> yeah, I want you to get his album too. Uh, but Brian Courtney Wilson's new record, a great work it's available now it came out last friday mm -hmm. um and he was down at the stella awards and he um he i think he had a, a like a private listening session he mm -hmm. talked about it on the show um so a lot of great music has been released also pj morton's yes. record is out um his project is available i think it's gumbo is that what it's called no, I might be saying the wrong record. Let me stop. <laughs> but PJ Moore's new record is available as well. All this great music that we hear on the radio all the time. So do we need radio? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Don't give up on radio. We need radio. Streaming is cool, but with that's how it started from radio. Exactly. And then with radio, Tracy, mm -hmm. you get the benefit of people actually talking about what's happening that's in true. the industry. Yes, you do. So you get, you know... Uh, that up close behind the scenes information mm -hmm. about what's going on at the Stellar Awards. Right. Who was there and what's this and that. So you get um, good commentary and mm -hmm. you get the get to have everything put in perspective for you as well. That's true. That's true. Versus so. just listening to these songs mm -hmm. back to back to back and there's right. not that authenticity going on. Mm -hmm. A real time conversation is happening right. that we need because we're real people. Exactly. Right. I'm alive. You alive. Right. right. We need to connect. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we don't want to give up on radio, but also the radio piece, we talked about indie artists mm -hmm. and um, how they communicate with you and the protocol for that. But some indie artists don't just communicate them through to you themselves. They have a radio promoter. Mm -hmm. And not just the independent artists, but those who are signed to a label or may have a distribution deal. I want to go and uh, discuss the radio promoter um, who you speak with. I'm sure you speak with several mm -hmm. on occasion all the time. If, you're, if you do have music and you, I'll say this, um, there's a scripture, Luke 14 and 28, count the cost. If you have the funds, seriously, if you have the funds and the the finances to finance your, the money to finance your career, um, meaning you have money for radio promotions and beyond, most most likely that you have hired a radio promoter. Mm -hmm. They are not cheap. Um, no. It costs, and I'll just throw a number out there. On average, I'll say on the gospel side, and I'm not giving money uh, amounts of t uh, re in connection to radio promoters and what they're getting in their pocket, but in general. Radio promotion budgets, paying it out, can average from 1500 to $6,000 $6, a month. Right. So that's for indie artists. And I'm not talking about the record label. That's a radio promotions budget. And we have people on salary, and they even contract people outside of the label. But 1500 to almost $6,000 a month. So this cost and what you're paying for are the connections they have and the ability to speak with mm -hmm. Deborah Rose, a program director um, for a radio station that you're trying to get your music played on. Mm -hmm. So you're playing, not pl you're not just paying for just that connection, but the time they spend of speaking with her on her music day. Yes. And also sometimes calling on her cell phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they do. You know, the, the relationship that they've built over the years with radio promote with program directors and also the radio announcers at the station because uh, they all work hand in hand so you're paying for that and we'll deal with that later as far as the the the, the uh, duties of a radio promoter but they do speak on your behalf mm -hmm. to a program director so okay. Deborah and I know that was a lot of information but I want you guys to understand how some of that works and the cost value cost the the dollar amount that's connected to hiring a radio promoter it costs so do your mind do your uh, math not do well, a fix your mind do your math um, <laughs> because we're talking about having a radio promoter for at least if if to really do some damage to a situation or put the work proper work in um, nine I'll say nine to twelve months um, three months easily it's it's pointless you might as well just keep your money six months maybe not really but you're talking about nine to 12 months uh, of working your project. Mm -hmm. So, Deborah, 
in regards to a, a, pro, a radio promoter, what is the protocol when you speak, they speak with you on the behalf of the artist? What happens in that conversation? It, it's almost the same as when the artist is calling me directly. Mm -hmm. um, the difference is the promoter knows when my music day is. Okay. And he or she, um, they tend to respect that. Mm -hmm. And they will call within those hours. And they're asking me specifically, have you reviewed the music first? Okay. Or first, have you received it? Then have you reviewed the music? Mm -hmm. What do you think about this music? And... The good thing about talking to the promoter versus the artist mm -hmm. is when I give my honest feedback, there are no emotions involved with it. Hmm. It's not personal. So it's the same as if you were to have an agent and your agent is going to negotiate on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Your agent can go in and boldly say, my client deserves $1 million. Right and negotiate back and forth. Well, the promoter is doing the same thing for you. Mm -hmm. They're saying, okay, this music is good because, and they're giving me background on the artist and where this song came from and where the artist is trying to take the music at this particular time. Mm -hmm. They're also able to tell me what other stations are playing the music right. or if I'm going to be the first one to break this. You know, That's so. Good. They're giving me um, more in-depth conversation okay. about the artists and their music. Now, now also, with, so with the radio promoter, um, after they give you the in-depth information and say you've added the song to your playlist, mm -hmm. what do you give them in return? Do you tell them, we, and I'm sorry, dealing with tracking. Mm -hmm. So is it heavy? <laughs> right. So Spins? I'm telling them. I'm usually just telling them if it's in light, medium, or heavy rotation. Okay. I don't give them an actual number mm -hmm. um, because my particular station, we don't report. Okay. Um, but, um, and this is something that's important too, mm -hmm. just because a radio station does not report, please do not um, sleep on that station right. or negate their uh, relevance to your product mm -hmm. being played. That's true. One, your product is still being played and people are still listening to it and hearing it and they're still going out to purchase that product exactly. as a result of hearing it on your on that particular station. Two, you don't want to sleep on a station just because they're not reporting because you don't know who that station is connected to. Mm -hmm. In my case, I am with a radio network. Mm -hmm. So we have three other radio stations in our network, one of which we play gospel music on Sundays, mm -hmm. and that station does report. Hmm. Now, I never know who they connected to. <laughs> all of the gospel music that gets entered into our system is done. Well, I should say, ninety-five percent of the gospel music that gets into our system mm -hmm. is done by me. Okay, mm -hmm. which means <laughs> that the people on the other station cannot play your song if I don't enter that music. Right. So again, that goes back to being respectful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, trying to forge a relationship with me because my tentacles right. are far reaching. Mm -hmm. And you you wouldn't know that unless you, you communicate with communicate me. With That's me. true. So when your mother told you a long time ago, it, you'd be nice to everybody <laughs> because you never know you never who's know. who. That's true. That is the case. So. You are speaking some wisdom <laughs> and truth um, because you're building these careers mm -hmm. and I say it all the time, the music industry is up and down. It can be, be an emotional roller coaster. Mm -hmm. It could just be a roller coaster all the way around. Yes. And it comes, it's, and it's seasonal. Mm -hmm. It's so seasonal. You can be number one today, number six tomorrow, number, back, number one again, mm -hmm. number 27 next month. Exactly. It happens, especially mm -hmm. the times we're in now. It's so easy for people to get on charts and mm -hmm. off charts just in a matter of days. Yes. Um, so what she's saying is true. And I don't know how many people knew that, that Deborah inputs all of the music for the Sunday 106. For 106. So any music that they pull, mm -hmm. it's music that I have placed into the system at some point or right. another. Right. So, uh, and Daryl King is our um, Sunday morning host. Mm -hmm. Well, Daryl selects her music on Sundays, mm -hmm. but she's selecting music that I have that she's put in. I've been put into the system. Right. So you never know who's working with who or how all of these things are working. So just 
put your best foot forward mm -hmm. with whatever radio station you go to. Right. The other good thing about having a radio promoter is that promoter is not just dealing with radio stations in a particular market, okay. say in the Chicago market. They're dealing with stations and program and music directors across the country. Mm -hmm. People that you may not even think about, you have no idea. Right. And because of the relationships, as you mentioned, that they have formed over the years, mm -hmm. they can have, you are in Chicago and your music is being played in San Antonio somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's another um, reason why you would want to um, invest in that piece of, of your business. Promoter. Mm -hmm. and, and start thinking of this as your business. Please. Good point. I'm going to make sure that I put that in the comment section. Mm -hmm. Start thinking of this as your business. Last your week, business. Deborah, I talked about the importance of having a team. Mm -hmm. And we started out saying you, the artist, are the first team member. Mm -hmm. It starts with you, not your manager, not your booking agent, exactly. uh, not the song or person who wrote your song mm -hmm. or the background singers. You are the first team member because all those other people underneath, they change up. They can't. You, hopefully, you get some people pretty loyal. You're loyal to them over time. Even mm -hmm. if not, that's okay. But they change up. You think of she says. Think of this as your business. Right. So, Deborah, we're continuing to talk about radio promotions. I'm enjoying this conversation because it's helping me. Mm -hmm. as well and I hopefully hopefully it's helping those who are paying attention again please share tonight's show yeah. if you're listening online I appreciate it let people know to listen online at tabernacleradio.org every Tuesday 7 p.m. Central Standard Time but we're here right now and if you're listening online but please share it on Facebook let people know about it if you know that they're interested in being an artist or they sing they think they can sing you don't know if they can <laughs> sing whatever it is right. or if they want to be an executive if they want to work at a radio station mm -hmm. um, be a programmer director so many different jobs careers right. things you can do being a part of the music industry but we're gonna go did you want to say share something else? I, I just want to share one, yeah. one other quick thing when you submit your um, music to a music director or a program director even if you do get through to him or her mm -hmm. that one time don't think because you spoke to that person that one time that now all of a sudden your music is going to um, be in constant rotation or even heavy rotation hmm. The other job of the record promoter is they're calling me every week to mm -hmm. see how is John Doe's music doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I forgot all about that. Give me another week so I can put that in. Right. They are constantly on me, which goes back to your point of it takes at least nine months to a year yes, it for, does. for you to start gaining the traction that you need. It, it's it's okay. the truth. It's the truth. So try not to become too. She just said they may forget, not on purpose, but right. she told you she got like fifty five jobs mm -hmm. at the at the station, and it <laughs> happens. It happens. So try not to take it personal. I told y'all, you gotta have thick skin being in this industry. You have to. You gotta learn to brush it off. Of course, it hurts. You may feel sad. I have felt sad so many times. I can't tell y'all. <laughs> no, serious. I have felt sad about things, yeah. but. It happens, and it's life at the same time. But this industry right here is rough. So if you're going to be a part of it, you got to develop over time, building up that thick skin. I told you, either people can say yes, no, or or ignore you. So be able to deal with <laughs> one of three, one of those three. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. Uh, doesn't mean they doing it on purpose, but it happens. Mm -hmm. She just said, hit her up again. <laughs> so you to remind her about it. Um, but we're talking more. Uh, Deborah's not going anywhere. She's right here. If you have questions on Facebook, let me check. I haven't looked at Facebook to see what people are saying. But let me see if we have any questions here on Facebook. If you have questions for Deborah, go ahead and type them in in the comments section about radio. If you want to know more about uh, submitting your music, uh, just please put it in the comments section. Uh, Calvin Bridges says, and Mama knows best. Yes, she does. <laughs> <laughs> Thank My you, Calvin. Loves you, Calvin Bridges. <laughs> Thank you so much. We got quite a few people who have joined the show. Uh, Kino is still checking in. Hey, Kino Street Sermons. How you doing, Kino? Kino has a fantastic show as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so many great people who are from Chicago who have great shows um, throughout the, the city. And just sh we're sharing music, sharing mu new artist music, uh, current artists, and soul winning through this form we call mm -hmm. the music industry. Uh, Ryan Booker. Hey, Ryan Booker. If you all don't know, Ryan Booker is one of my artists I manage. I'm so excited to do that. Um, please go check out his new music, his song. It's called Best That You Got. And it's on SoundCloud. So, Ryan, go ahead and do the hashtag mm -hmm. of SC First. Um, but so many more people are saying things. Uh, Patricia 
Oh, thank you so much, Patricia. I'm trying to um, just just do my best with sharing information and having great <laughs> guests on here, such as Deborah, um, just to share more information to help you guys become better mm -hmm. artists. But we're going to go. Thank you. Thank you, Kino. Thank you so much. Um, trying to give as much information as possible. Yes. We're going to go to more music. Actually, tonight, in, during the, I haven't done an indie segment in a while, but tonight during our independent artist segment, we're going to hear, and this is great for the Easter season that's coming up a resurrection time resurrection Sunday is this Sunday actually the song is by Wendell Parker and he's from Chicago and his new song is we're going to air it's been played before on several stations but we're going to listen to it tonight and it's called the redemption song here on the artist stage <laughs>
and that was Wendell Parker and his new single Redemption and he God did it just for you he did it just for me and the Resurrection Sunday is coming up this Sunday mm -hmm. April 1st is it yes, yes April 1st ma April 1st April 1st April Fool's Day that's, you know, now. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you gotta be courageous you gotta be firm you gotta be on guard because mm -hmm. <laughs> you never know how things play out mm -hmm. and you wanna make sure we wanna make sure that how we respond to things is correct and in order all right I try to be sometimes maybe I think you do a pretty good job all right all right maybe. yeah you do a good job <laughs> thank you Deborah yeah. but we're talking about radio promotions the relevancy of it it mm -hmm. is relevant we need it no matter how many Spotify playlists I have because I have a lot of them I'm sorry Deborah. I do <laughs> I as don't. long as you come back to radio. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And 102.3 <laughs> specifically. Specifically. Now, you yes. know, I got this show, too, that I do now. Okay, but that's not every day. That's not every day. That's not every day. So every Tuesday, <laughs> but then, but every day, I got to make sure. No, yes. of course, of mm -hmm. course. And there's so many great, it's just, I just want to give this shout out to all of the phenomenal radio pro program directors and announcers in the Chicago land area yes. who do a phenomenal job mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. because you guys, you up early. Mm -hmm. You're there late, you're doing long hours, whether you're on the air, you're not on the air, but you're putting in music all the time and you're receiving music and you all have a pretty, pretty big job. Yeah. Pretty big job. Mm -hmm. um, talking to artists, scheduling interviews, going to shows, award shows, interviewing artists. That is a pretty Great job, and Isn't it's that a the big glamorous job. life. It's supposed to be. <laughs> That's what they tell us. It's supposed to be. All the pictures you get to take with all these artists, mm -hmm. and and hear them tell you how you didn't play their music, and then they got a smile and everything else. So it's mm -hmm. a great life. Yes. No, it is. But I just want to say just a shout out to everyone and all the announcers and program directors from the Chicago area and beyond but specifically from Chicago because that's where I'm from yeah. born and raised um, but just because you guys do such a great job every day on the radio we want to keep radio going because we need radio Thank um, you, to help pu push the form of soul winning uh, mm -hmm. that artists do with their music but we're still talking about the rel like I said, relevant be radio being relevant, and also the protocol of how to submit music. We've talked about uh, what a radio promoter does, and when you should have one when they talk to someone as Deborah, being a program director, um, how to submit music. But also, Deborah, so when an artist, if you they're not playing, if you're not playing their music, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what type of conversations? And then this may be too much, but. You know, okay. I just I'll let you know if it's too much. All right. But what type of conversations do you have? Because uh, I know it happens when you may see, because I talked about you taking pictures with everybody. You may see an artist mm -hmm. who says, so why didn't you play my song? Like, I haven't heard my song on your station. What's mm -hmm. up with that? You know what? I haven't had that particular conversation okay. um, with uh, an artist. I, I, well, I can say this. I recently ran into an artist whose mm -hmm. music for some reason I was not playing her music okay but I ran into her at a conference that I was at this past Saturday mm -hmm. and when I looked at her I was, thought to myself why are you not playing her music and I went back and I listened to it and I was like there's no reason why I'm not playing her music mm -hmm. but she doesn't have a promoter either okay and so again sometimes things will slip through the cracks mm -hmm. um, I happened to see her and I went back and I revisited the music and I you know, I'm putting it back into rotation. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so sometimes I, I just haven't had. Nope, but no one has. Um, I have not had an artist to say, why to are say you not playing not? my music? I have had someone on behalf of an artist mm -hmm. ask me, why are you not playing his or her music? Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes <laughs> the people just are not nice. Yeah, that's true. The Let's artists nice. themselves are not nice. Mm -hmm. And you think, Ugh. Why are you? <laughs> <laughs> why we have to be so mean? Why, why right. are you so mean? And you know, but but they're yeah. they're being passionate about their client. Is that what it is? Mm, no, no, no. They're okay, just being mean they're sometimes. just being mean. So let's you work know. on being and nicer. Don't, yeah, don't don't do that to the the program. You're asking someone to do something for you. That's true. Um, because you know you're not paying. Um, you you pay a promoter, mm -hmm. a, a record promoter to. Um, push your music you don't pay me right to pay your music so um i don't necessarily 
work for you. Exactly. You and, know, and, and what, to, no, not, not, let me just clear that up. <laughs> I don't work for you. <laughs> you know, our people who work on radio, commercial radio, mm-hmm. our salaries are paid by advertisement. Hmm. And your music is what helps us to sell the advertisement. Got you. So you, I, I really don't work for you. I hope you guys are listening because she's explaining <clears throat> how this works. Right. So and you brought up the money piece. Now, that has mm-hmm. been a topic of discussion for years and years and years of money being paid or artists being unaware of that you are not paying them no. to play your music. No, and if someone That's tells that you works. that you need to pay them in order for them to play your music, run for the hills. Yes. Please, run for the hills. People um, have lost their jobs. Some people have been, you know, it's just a terrible thing mm-hmm. when when, the, when that payola comes into uh, play. Right. So um, we, you don't pay us. Hope you're hearing what you're saying. We are not a part of your budget. (laughs) No. So listen (laughs) to these words. It's coming directly from a program director Mm -hmm. of a very elite, premier, just a station that's been going on for years and years. Which is another reason why we are able to be um, as honest and candid with you as we can. Mm -hmm. um, Because we don't have those types of um, allegiances or ties or, uh, you know, those shackles on us. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. So run, she said, run for the hills. Like seriously, you, if that's what you're you're uh, being presented, um, research, research, research. Do your research of how this thing works. Paying people to play your music is not how this works. And honestly, think about it. Do you want that anyway? Because what that means is, if I can give her five hundred dollars to play my record, somebody else come finds out about that I'm giving her five hundred and they really want their music played, they may give her a thousand. Mm-hmm. If she need her bills paid, now she's not gonna do this, but if she need her bills paid, she's probably gonna move my little five hundred dollars out the way and take their thousand, which moves my song out of the playlist where it was on her for her station. Mm-hmm. So that up and down stuff, when you see things going up and down, up and down like that, just just wonder what's going on. <laughs> no, I'm serious. That happens. Yes. Um, but that's not what you want anyway. You want mm-hmm. a solid foundation for your career. You mm-hmm. want it to develop and grow just the way anything else grows. Mm-hmm. You pregnant with a child. It grows over time. Just I'm pregnant today. Here is the baby. Right. What and are it's we 18. Ha- exactly. No, I right. Know. I mean, that doesn't even sound right. Mm-hmm. So you want you want things to grow and develop for your building your musical legacy and your career. So stay away mm-hmm. from that payola thing. It has happened. It has happened mm-hmm. over the years and it's probably still happening. Yes. But just <laughs> run from mm-hmm. it. That's not what you want for your music career. Exactly. Uh, Deborah, we're going to continue talking about the music and we're going to go to some music and also we're going to come back and talk about some things you are doing. Mm-hmm. Personally and as an individual outside of the radio station and the radio world mm-hmm. as Deborah Rose, the author, yes. successful author. Mm-hmm. But right now, let's go to the number one song hey. right now on the gospel billboard BDS chart. Coming from Todd Delaney, he's on the Stellar Awards also this weekend. And the song is called Your Great Name. <laughs> 